Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching iGAN. Yesterday was WWDC 2020, the first time ever Apple has done an online only event. It had some amazing transitions and amazing cinematography, which I was really excited about. But they also announced a lot of new, interesting updates to all their operating systems, including iOS, iPadOS, and also macOS. They also announced updates to tvOS. And more importantly, the biggest announcement, which was their one more thing, was of course. Uh, the new announcement of Apple Silicon, which means that they'll be getting rid of Intel processors in future Macs. Uh, but they did hint to the fact that new Macs with Intel processors are coming later this year. Uh, they were running an iMac on just the A12X chip, which is the iPad chip. Uh, they were also running Final Cut and all of those things. So we've always spoken about how powerful the iPads have been, especially the Pro versions. And uh, the capability of them running Final Cut would have been awesome. Now we potentially get that with the new Macs because they're running Apple Silicon and um, in the future we'll get to see the power of that. Uh, what this also does is that it removes Hackintosh completely from the picture. So after a couple of years, you will not be able to buy Intel hardware and put it together to form a Hackintosh because Apple has basically kicked out Intel. And only older generation Intel chips will continue to be supported. So in the future, if you currently own an Intel based iMac or a MacBook, you'll continue to get software updates, but no new iMacs or MacBooks will be made with Intel processors. Now iOS was one of the biggest updates in uh, the entire announcement and some of the newest features are pretty exciting. I wanted to test out some of these. So we have a iPhone over here uh, running iOS 14. So you can see that the desktop or uh, the home screen is pretty much uh, what we've seen before. I do have uh, new updates in here. So first of all, you can actually hide the home screen. So if I go into edit home screen, so I can uh, tap on these three dots at the bottom and I can now manage uh, what uh, apps show on what home pages. So I can completely disable or enable home pages. So you can see that now I have four home pages, but if I tap here, I can disable two of them if I'm not using them. So I only have two home pages. Uh, this is cool because if you don't use apps frequently, you can hide most of those apps and you can just search for them. They can still be on your uh, phone but you don't need to look at them. And if they're just apps that you don't really use every day, then they don't need to clutter your home screen. So this basically helps you declutter because for me, for example, I have lots of apps on lots of pages and this allows you to declutter those. Another cool thing is that once you've gotten rid of all the apps from your home screen, which is something that I'm gonna do, they finally have something called the app library. It's like an app drawer on Android. So now you can search for your apps. You can just simply scroll up and you get all your apps uh, alphabetically. Uh, or you can just press cancel and they put them in categories and uh, based on what the app is. So if it's a gaming app, it'll come into gaming. If it's an entertainment app, it'll come into entertainment. So all of these apps will be put into those categories uh, automatically and you don't need to do anything to uh, sort of find them or put them in folders. Uh, Apple will automatically do that for you. If you prefer a standard alphabetical approach, you can go and search for your app alphabetically as well. So this is pretty cool. Uh, long awaited feature, been on Android for many years, you can finally get it. I like the categories bit, but I'm not sure if a lot of people will enjoy it because you might not know what category your app belongs to, especially if it's a productivity or a utility, you might get confused. So I think that the alphabetical way is better, but this is a new approach. Let's see how it pans out. Another thing that a lot of people have been waiting for for years now on iOS is widgets on the home screen. So with the new iOS 14, you finally get widgets on the home screen. So you still have widgets on the left side notification panel. So if I just swipe left, I still have all my widgets here. But if I want to, I can simply drag and drop a widget onto my main home screen. Now it automatically adjusts the apps around it so that it fits into wherever you want to in your grid, uh, which is quite cool. So it smoothly uh, fits in. So if I want to say put it here, uh, this is my battery information. Uh, I can have that over here. So I don't need to swipe down all the time. It's right here on my home screen. Something that a lot of iPhone users will really like. Now I can also modify these widgets. So I can edit the home screen. I can tap here. And now I have tons of widgets that I can search from. So if I want to choose a bigger battery widget. So if I have my Apple Watch connected, uh, my AirPods connected, I can have a status of all of these things right here on the home screen and uh, that can be used. Again, I can drag it and place it wherever I want. I can get rid of this by pressing the minus button and now this becomes the main one and I can move this around wherever I want. 
And if you want any other widget, lots of widgets are already available right out the bat. So if I want to put a weather widget, I have uh, several size options again, so I can add a simple weather widget here. And I can move it around like I mentioned, and I can put it here. So now I don't need to open the weather app every time I want to look at uh, my weather. Now, there is a little bit of a glitch, even though I have uh, kept my uh, weather on degree Celsius. It first shows up in Fahrenheit and then it goes to Celsius, as you guys can see over here. So they're still working out those, I'm sure, because this is a beta release. It's not a final release, uh, but you can see that. Another widget that was really cool was the Smart Stack widget. So here you can see we have the weather, but this is a smart widget. So you can switch between certain things. And based on how you use uh, this widget, it'll automatically start uh, giving you things. So if in the morning you're looking at news, it'll show you the top stories in the morning. Uh, but later in the day, if you're looking at your calendar, it'll show you the calendar. If you make some calls or uh, have notes or to-do lists, it'll start showing you to-do lists. So it does have a few things already in here. Uh, but it'll automatically start learning based on your behavior and then give you widgets as per your requirements. So you don't have to clutter your home screen with tons of widgets. You can just have this one main widget over here, which can show you a lot of cool things in, throughout your day. Another major update was, uh, of course, messages. So messages get a massive overhaul. But before I get into that, I want to show you some of the features that they've modified, so to speak. So if you jump into Siri, now it shows up like this at the bottom here. And uh, it's non-invasive. It doesn't cover the entire screen. It doesn't hide what you're doing. So while searching or while browsing something or while watching a movie, I can search for something, say, who is the Prime Minister of India? Narendra Modi is the Prime Minister of India. So as you can see that the results also show up within the home screen itself. So you don't have to switch between pages. So if I was watching a documentary on, for example, the Prime Minister of India, and I wanted to pull out some information, it would just come up above that and not disrupt whatever I'm doing. So this is a non-invasive way of using your voice assistant. And I find this much better than the previous version, which had to cover the entire screen with a black shade. Uh, this is much more intuitive, I feel. So a lot of these on-screen elements have been updated. You also get now picture in picture. So if I'm in YouTube watching a video and uh, if I decide to go back to the home screen, I can just swipe up and now I'm in the home screen, but my video is still here. I can move the video around, of course. I can also resize the video, uh, but I can also simply tap and uh, kill the video from here. So it's pretty cool. If I just want to listen to the audio of the video and I don't want to watch the video, I can do that as well. So I can just swipe. Uh, this to the side and it sort of hides to the side. Now I don't have to uh, look at it, I can just listen to it. And uh, if I want to bring it back, I can just swipe it back in uh, to my frame and continue watching it. So this works throughout the OS. It works while multitasking. I can go back to uh, Safari, start using it. I can do whatever I want. Uh, my video will keep playing. I can also move it around. Uh, it's very smooth, This, even though it's a pre-release, it's not a public beta, it's a private developer beta. It seems to work really well even with that. If you're getting a FaceTime call, uh, it'll also not completely take over the screen and you'll get it just as a pop-up on the top. And once you do accept a FaceTime video call and you want to go back to your home screen or you want to look at something else while you're on the call, you can also convert the window into a smaller window for FaceTime and continue using your phone. Now messages is one of the coolest updates I feel. Uh, you get a really cool new layout and of course you can pin your messages here as well. So if you look at this group, I can uh, simply swipe to the right and pin the group. And you can see the icons of everyone who's a member in this group as well. And you can see that if I get a message, I get uh, the bubble on top of the pinned messages. So I don't even have to open my messages to read the bubble. So if, even if someone's typing in uh, the pinned messages, you can see the bubbles uh, pop up over there. And if somebody sends you a message, it also shows up directly on uh, the screen of the pinned messages. So that also works really well, and I think that it looks good. Another cool thing is a threaded replies. So if you reply to someone in particular, uh, you get a threaded replies now. And if you tap on that reply, you can just read the thread without needing to read through the entire group. So if you're just replying to someone uh, in the thread, it auto automatically joins that thread, and the notification for that also only goes to the person who's in the thread. So here, if I'm replying to Anand, the notification is only going to Anand and not to everyone else, which is quite cool. Now, another thing that you can do is uh, slamming down emojis or memojis. So I can come here and I can pick up a emoji sticker and I can slam it on a message. Earlier, you can only do basic things like uh, 
uh, drop a heart or a like now you can dra uh, drop in memoji stickers uh, which is quite cool so you can have better reactions to something uh, that somebody says directly on here and i've been trying this you can actually dump in quite a bit of these messages or memoji icons directly on a single message to the point where it completely hides i don't know if this is something that apple wants but i can continue to drop these as many times as i want if i tap i can go and read that message again it hides uh, the icons i can still do that i can still send the old school uh, icons here but uh, the memoji slam is pretty cool i think now like i said i really like this layout and you can add as many people to the pinned uh, list so it almost becomes like a favorites and then interacting with them becomes much more easier especially in india especially because we get a lot of spam sms messages so if you're an i message and you have a group of people that you constantly communicate with uh, texting them in iMessage will become that much easier. Apple has also built in translation onto the new iOS 14. I was testing this out earlier, it works quite well. So it's pretty simple and uh, you can just open the translate app, it's right here. And uh, you can see that I've been experimenting with it. I can scroll up and see my translation history. But if I'm here and I want to simply translate something into French, or uh, something back into English if I'm communicating with someone, this is pretty cool. So if I'm in the app and I want to ask something, I can simply tap on the mic and speak it out in English and it'll automatically translate that into whatever language I can choose. So uh, you can choose from a few languages that are already available. You can also download translations for all of these languages. So if you're going to France, for example, or if you're traveling to France, or if you're going to be communicating with somebody who's French, you can download uh, the French translation directly on the phone so you can have offline translations available for these. And lots of other languages according to Apple will be added in the future, but right now these languages are available. So uh, let's stick to French. I'm going to ask a few questions in English. So uh, let's try this out. Where is the movie theater? So it does give me an answer right there. I can also turn on uh, the speaker. So it'll also read that out for me now. And uh, that works out quite well. Uh, let's try now. So you don't have to tap which language you're speaking in. It automatically detects uh, the language. So, comment ça va? How is everything? So it automatically detects that I was speaking in French and it replies in English automatically. So if I was having a, a conversation with someone, we could simply tap the mic button to speak and then the app would translate. Uh, this works really well. So I'm going to ask a few more questions. Où est mon portable? Where is my cell phone? So you can see that it translates that as well. Um, let me try one more thing. Où est le café? Where is the cafe? So it does translate French to English very quickly and English to French very quickly as well. I'm going to try the same question in English as well. Where is the cafe? So if it doesn't realize what you're saying, it'll ask you uh, what language you were speaking in because it got a little confused over there. And then it asked me what language I was speaking in. And uh, that was uh, pretty interesting. Where is the cafe? So all of this works out uh, really well, especially if you're using the Translate app. Another cool feature of this is if you turn it into landscape, it converts into a conversation mode. So if I'm here and uh, the person I'm speaking to is on my right, we can simply have a conversation and they can understand everything that they are getting in uh, French and I can understand everything that they're speaking in English. So a pretty cool layout for the app. I hope they continue to develop it. It will turn out to be a really cool app to use, especially if they continue to add more languages. Uh, could be useful for Hindi as well. I don't know how well they can do that, but this is pretty cool. More updates on iOS 14 include the new home app. It allows you to have more granular control over your devices. So here you can see I have lots of bulbs and things. So I can jump into rooms and I can set up ambient uh, lighting or adaptive lighting. So in the morning uh, when you wake up, it'll uh, wake you up with warm uh, white lights, but eventually during the day it'll convert to uh, bright white lights. And then in the evening when you're ready to sleep, it'll automatically convert those to warm white lights. So whether you just ask Siri to turn on or turn off, uh, the lights, it will automatically have those lights set to those colors. So if you do have smart bulbs uh, that work with HomeKit, 
uh, that do have uh, colors as an option as well this will automatically set up those colors for you if you choose adaptive lighting so that is pretty cool another thing that you can do is uh, your cameras so uh, if you do have a camera this is a camera that we have on one of our gates and if i do have somebody's pictures in my photos uh, the iphone within my photos will search for that person's face and uh, then automatically tell me who's at the gate this is uh, kind of creepy <laughs> with respect to ai but it works it's all done on the chip it's all done on device it's not sending the data uh, to a server or anything so it's still safe from a privacy perspective but then if uh, you are looking at your cameras it will constantly uh, monitor uh, the face of somebody who's at your gate and then tell you if uh, your friend is at the gate and if you should respond to it or not Another cool thing is that this also now shows up on uh, the new TV OS. So if you do have uh, the latest version of TV OS, you can look at your cameras on TV OS as well. And uh, you can also get those notifications on TV OS. If you have somebody within your photos that you've tagged as a contact, uh, it'll automatically recognize the face and tell you that your friend or your relative is at the gate. One of the coolest things uh, that was announced for iOS was Apple car keys. Now uh, this was demoed with uh, a BMW 5 series from 2021, which is yet to be launched. And all you need to do is unlock your phone and place it next to uh, the car and unlock the car and you don't need to carry your keys with you and you can place the phone on the wireless charging mat and then you can start your car and basically drive off. Uh, the coolest aspect of this is because they are digital keys you can share them with your friends. So if your friends also have an iPhone you can send it securely via iMessage and you can delete these keys at any time from iCloud so it's safe as well and it stays on the iPhone uh, protected by face id so if your phone does get lost uh, you do lose your car keys uh, but it stays safe nobody can steal your car just because they have your phone and you can always go on icloud and delete everything uh, from the icloud data so i find this really cool plus and a negative because if you lose your phone you lose everything but i also find it a plus because you have lesser chance of losing your phone because you just have the one thing to take care of so that was a quick roundup of everything uh, with the new iOS. I did a lots of new other features as well, including the fact that AirPods will now automatically jump uh, from device to device. So if you have an iPhone, an iMac, an iPad, whether you start working on one or the other, the AirPods will automatically connect to them and you won't need to constantly choose AirPods from the Bluetooth menu. Uh, this is pretty cool as well. Uh, for those who are constantly uh, switching between devices, who have lots of devices, somebody like me. I'm not sure how it will work because if I'm on a video call on, say, my iMac on uh, Microsoft Teams and suddenly I get a phone call, is it going to mute uh, my iMac? Is it going to mute my iPhone? I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm going to test that out. But I still find this a really cool feature, something worth checking out. So those were all the cool updates for iOS uh, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, what do you think of the new updates? Some are features that we've seen on other operating systems for a long time, but some are really cool new features. There's also lots of new updates to Maps, uh, which you can uh, see in uh, the detailed video that Apple did put out yesterday. But let me know what your thoughts are. Drop them in the comment section below. If you like the video, don't forget to smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Aigyan. This has been Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.